Hello everybody, this is super short notice and I can't even believe it, I'm, I made it somehow with all the social posts whatsoever, but yet yeah, we are here, we have the Mushi challenge, his team versus, well, in summary, six teams, like, I have to get familiar with the entire format myself, but it is, the teams are Interactive Philippines, Invasion, MSI, the EVO GT, and Aero Gaming, Mineski, and Regal tomorrow. These six teams, they challenge the Mushi team, and Mushi teams uh, consists of, well, once we get into the game, that is, but it consists of Mushi himself, of course, uh, Double Liu Thief, KYXY, Net, and Ohio, and whoa, like, I have no idea what happened right now, but apparently someone couldn't load in, someone disconnected whatsoever, but we will be back, I hope, and that gives me even a bit more time to, I don't know, try to get this up, like, I tried to get this on the JD ticker, maybe even on the betting sites, on Dota 2 Best YOLO, but at the moment the admins are all either AFK or still sleeping, I mean, I just woke up pretty much 15 minutes ago when uh, I got contacted here. Heflyer TV, can you guys uh, cover this? And I'm like, yeah, sure, no problem, we can cover this. And, well, like, I'm super excited because this is really, this is a good event. I definitely like it. Like, it's a nice idea by Mushi. And, well, let's see where it goes. For now, we have two people that have to just reconnect. The server location is Singapore, as you guys see right now on the screen. But for some reason, they had computer problems whatsoever. And I'm, I'm still glad that uh, many people actually managed to get here, like 250 people, just for the fact that we have such a short notice. And I also hope, like, uh, theoretically, Coucher should come online uh, pretty much soon, or any other caster of Hefla TV. They're all sleeping. They have been casting today in the night just five hours ago. So I hope at least someone is coming online so we get a co-caster up. Because as you know, on Hefla TV, you mostly have two casters. Either way, uh, the interactive Philippines team, they are ready again, which means we are loading in. And there is no picnic, there is just picnic for the players at the moment. Just trying to fix everything. Oh god, oh god, oh god. Well, at the moment, the, the only people that know about this match are pretty much those who checked our Facebook like Hefla TV on Facebook, Hefla TV on Twitter, etc. And of course, maybe look for Twitch, whatsoever. But look at it, guys. We are in the draft. There we go. We finally made it. So yeah, Gigabyte G1. Mushi's team here. And uh, Mushi is Mr. Unpredictable. I have to sort out these names, but existence, existence should be uh, double. And then we have... I don't know, blah blah blah, <laughs> Night Market 39, Yoko Yoko. These should be KYXY Net and Ohio, but don't ask me who is who. Jesus, I have to sort this out. I have to ask them in the next lobby who is who. On the other side, like, um, I'm not familiar with the interactive Philippine guys. I'm, I think I casted them once in my life. Just once. But apparently, yeah, they also don't stick to the original names, they stick to crazy whatsoever names so excuse me if I don't get the names straight here but of course I'm always working with the chat and if the chat is telling me this is this player this is this player then sure we will see if we get it up either way we are in the draft and let's see what we got let's focus on the Dota instead of all the exposure and promotion whatsoever we have the Furion being banned out Mr. Mushi decides okay no split push coming out here Naga Siren and Doom on the other side Something typical for C, I'd say, especially the Naga, like, I, I always remember Miracle, Naga, for example, Death Prophet being banned out as well, so a lot of push on one side getting banned out, which is interesting, because that leaves now Razor, Void, Lycan, it leaves so many options up, because, I don't know, usually when I cast games, and this is mostly the, the Western scene, European scene, the North and South American scene, as well as CIS Dota, I mean, Hefla TV always wants to go into more Southeast Asian Dota, but unfortunately, it's kind of hard to sometimes get in these tournaments, but 
yeah, like if I'm so used to seeing Panda, Doom, Lycan, Void being banned out first, sometimes we see a Razor instead of a Void, sometimes we see a Tinker instead of a Panda or a Void, something like that. But yeah, here with these bands, we have everything is open, everything can pretty much happen, and look at it, Lycan is coming out, and then right after, something I didn't expect. A Dazzle is coming out. Okay, so we have a Shallow Crave, a Weave for the big team fights, and well, let's see, maybe we see a Shadow Demon uh, for the nice combo, Disruption into the Shadow Wave. Sky that might be, of course, made. interesting, but besides that, I don't know, it's it's looking really interesting. Sky of Mage and Razor being picked on the other side, so I think Mushi has to ban out the Void ASAP in the second ban stage here, otherwise this would be too good of a combination. Uh -huh. There would be Eye of the Storm, Plasma Field, even Static Link into the Chrono, Sky of Mage with a Mystic Flare. This is a combo you must not have. You must not give this your enemy. So the Void ban is kinda 100% needed here. 100% needed. And let's see. For now, well, the Rasta is one thing. Sure, more push being banned out. I mean, we don't have a Krobolus. We don't have a Furion right now. We don't have Mr. Hayataya. That is already three big pushes coming out. Like, well, there's not much left. And Mushi decides to ban the Dream Protector. Okay, that's quite interesting. I didn't see him coming out, but then again, why not? I mean, it makes Lycan's job a bit easier, for sure. So he can just split push and the team goes with the 4 and 5 or 4 man roaming strategy like we saw it yesterday for example. We had it in a, a Titan versus Myth. For all those who were watching Hefla TV 1 yesterday, uh, Titan versus Myth we had pretty much the same where the Lycan was pretty much played all the time. He didn't join a single team fight, he was just split pushing all the way. But either way, Ancient Apparition is the last one they decide to go for here. And let's see, on the other side, I say it has to be a void. Like, leaving the void in here, that would be too dangerous. Unless they want to get the void themselves. They have the next pick, the third one is a Mushi side. And they pick a Rubik. Okay, a Rubik is getting banned out, a Viper. And now this leaves Interactive Philippines with the choice to go for a void. And I think they should definitely do it. But let's talk for the Viper first. Well, this is our candidate for either safe lane or mid. Like we see many teams, they even swapped it around, put the Lycan in the mid, and the Viper on a safe lane or in a tri lane anywhere. But, well, against the Razor. I'm not a huge fan of Razor versus Viper. I mean, at the start, with the low movement speed on the Viper, the Razor can actually leech himself full of damage all the time. But then later, with a higher, um, with a higher poison attack, that's kind of okay because you can kite the razor even when he dives you under the tower but let's see they s secure the brewmaster now everybody is ignoring the void i can i can't even believe this i mean scarif mage is out razor is out and you don't pick a void you don't ban a void i either either i'm blind or my screen is bugged but both teams completely ignore this hero this goes so against the current meta amazing just amazing witch doctor Okay, Lycan, Dazzle, Viper, Witch Dog. Now, if that's not a perfect setting for a Void still, it could be a safe lane Viper, Lycan mid offline Void and the Viper getting the try line. That, that might be still an option. So interactive Philipp Philippines, like if they don't pick the Void with the Sky of Mage synergy, then they have to ban it because that would be also still a... Uh, possibility for Mushi, but maybe I'm completely wrong. Both teams completely forgot about this hero, so let's see what else could come out. I mean, for Interactive Philippines, they still need to pick another support. A stun would, wouldn't be bad, because you need something to lock down the Lycan. Right now, the Lycan is having a good time, because there's only Sky of Mage, the Silence. Sure, it's okay if you get it before the thingy out, before the shapeshift, and the Sky of Mage has one slow but that doesn't affect him in shapeshift and besides that you only have boulder toss and the cyclone if the brewmaster is in his ultimate form after the primal split besides that they have nothing they have absolutely nothing to shut down the lycan he can just come in and go whenever he pleases and that's of course bad news for the filipino guys here so let's see if they pick something 
that stuns. Earthshaker is still in there. Sand King is still in there. The Void is also like I I'd pick the Void, but well, apparently the teams don't agree with me. And yeah, don't insult the Moobot. The Moobot is always giving you nice information, and I uh, like totally forgot to update the the score. Team Mushi zero versus IP now. There we go. And someone is writing wrong predictions commentator. Totally wrong. Yes, I've been I've been totally wrong. Like I I thought the void is having more emphasis here in this game. Sand. And I'm really disappointed. But I wasn't wrong with the stunner that has to come out. Sand King or Earthshaker are predicted and there we go. It's coming out. The fifth the fifth bands are coming now and well, I say it has to be a void because either team could still pick the void. It would fit <laughs> Especially for Mushi's team, it would still fit if they want to. They have two supports, they have a mid, they have something for the try lane, and they can go for a utility void in the offlane if they want to. Like, I really think it's a bad mistake to give it, but maybe Mushi thinks like, oh guys, we don't need void. The guy with the blue bubble is just not interesting enough for us. They ban out the, uh, the Tight Hunter as well as the center, so both teams ban out the offlaner here. Not having the big Ravage, sure. That is definitely something <coughs> you don't want to see. But now, it's all about the fifth ones. It's a Dark Seer. Okay. That's very interesting, to be honest. I mean, with the Viper Slows, with the, uh, say, with the Dark Seer vacuum and wall, maybe into the Witch Dog Casket, and of course the bouncing Death Ward. That might be interesting. Not to mention that if there there are illusions and everything around the the dazzle shadow wave is gonna do a ton of damage as well. So it's a nice combo, but I still I kind of like the stuns on Mushi's team as well because right now we have nothing but the witch dog casket. Everything is just slow, and that's pretty much it. So like I'm 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 really surprised by this draft. This draft is is absolutely fun. <laughs> it's it's really fun. I can't make too much sense out of it. <laughs> the fifth one for the interactive Philippines. They actually don't have much time. They have to pick it and it's it's Ember Spirit. Jesus Christ, Hefla, Hef you've been so wrong. Like every team here, they didn't ban the void, they didn't pick the void. Everybody ignored that hero. No blue bubble is coming out. It is just Wow. Okay. So how do they lane this on interactive Philippines side? This is then Brewmaster mid, uh, Ember mid. Who is who here then? Like, oh, is this a Brewmaster offlane, Ember safe lane, Razor mid? That might work out. Sure. I think that's even the best solution. But like with those three greedy cores. It's it's definitely interesting what they picked together here. On the other side, well, the Lycan and the Viper, like I still think the Lycan is, is gonna be in the mid, but now that Mushi picked the Viper, so we might see this actually swapped around. The Lycan going into a tri lane here, Darkseer obviously in the offline. This might be the best idea for them. But yeah, we have to anyway find out who is who. I have to ask pretty much. I don't know if the Mineski guys know what's going on but either way we're gonna introduce the the teams really fast even though yeah I have to sort out the names so unpredictable that's Mushi for sure then existence that is uh, the support player here a uh, double W D U T F. <laughs> I don't know how to pronounce this name this is double U T F. double U T F. yeah I, I think I got this one right now double U T F. I just call him double I guess and then the other three guys here, Nightmare, Yoko, blah blah blah, like who is who, we have to ask. Like, I just want to make sure that I don't have anything right, because I don't know if they play in their original position. 
<laughs> They're not flying. Okay, the dogs here. So blah 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 is Ohio. <laughs> Lycan is KOXY. And yeah, that leaves net on the night mark. Uh, on nightmare night market here. What that is crazy. That is crazy, crazy. <laughs> Viper is mushy, yeah. <laughs> oh god. Okay, now they're joking with me. He, he put up the entire list, but either way, now we know it. So, yes. Yoko Yoko is KYXY, blah 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 is. I forgot it already. Is net. No, Witch Dog is net. And then. Oh god, I'm so confused. <laughs> but yeah. Just making sure I got this right. So yeah, Ohio on the darks here. I mean, that's obvious. He's playing that. He's playing the offliner anyway all the time. KYXY, safe lane, witch dog. He and that is support. I have to remember all this. And double is playing the thingy. But now we have like reconnects and disconnects. Either way, that should be enough for a dire introduction, I guess. And now we're looking on the other side. And of course they also don't have the original names and I don't even have to, the roster of the interactive Philippines so I can just assume so Fox Koya then exclamation mark times 3 then 4694 on the race and we on the Sand King guys help me out who's who someone knows the roster <laughs> Where is the void? Please report. Yeah, that's that's actually what I thought. I mean, not the reporting part, but like the drafting part is very interesting to say the least. Either way, guys, the game is starting. Everybody disconnected, connected. At least once we had our pause that has to happen each and every game. And now we look at the laning. So far, they are all just going together, maybe looking for something. But let's see. We have like here a little three man train going more northish while the others they just head towards the jungle directly I don't know if they expect Team Mushi here to come in the jungle I don't think that's a good idea why Mushi is more looking maybe for a gank anything like that against the offliner but they won't find anything they just checked Roshan just in case Mushi had that crazy idea of going for a level 1 Roshan I mean it would fit to Mushi Mushi is a crazy guy that is just a fact and well, no, now they changed even name. Double is now on his original name. KYXY. Yay, we got, we got the nice names. I can't even believe it. There's Mushi. There's Ohio. Oh look, <laughs> they're so good to me today. <laughs> oh, my chat is is just going mad. That's cool. I love it. <laughs> Either way, guys, the game is starting, and let's see where well, we got the rune. So far, we have just uh, one observer ward, which actually is here. Ohio is gonna get the first ward, but yeah, this static link, it didn't even get a single damage. Either way, illusion here on Ohio. There is a second observer ward here coming out by the Gigabyte team of Mushi, and it's a laning ward for top. Well, we're gonna have a tri lane versus tri lane, and over all this tri lane, well, it's. I guess it's kinda a promising tri lane if you look at it, because we have a double slow. If he gets the thunderclap off, of course, concussive shot should be probably the first skill to go for, unless he wants to go for a ras and of course the burrow strike. They come online when they are level two because level one the abilities might not be strong enough. But of course, on the other side, we have a slow if he's going for the poison touch. We have, of course, the casket coming out. You already skilled that one. Only lichen, well, it's just there for some right clicks. Maybe that's pretty much it. So I think when it comes to potency of the lane. We definitely have the interactive Philippines here having a slight advantage in the tri lane, so Mushi's team has to play a bit careful here. In the mid, well, Viper versus Ember Spirit, that's definitely an interesting game. Mushi here already going for one point in Nether Toxin, and oh, top, there is the blink, the first slow coming out here on KYXY. Casket is coming, the slow actually hits on the Witch Dog instead of the Lycan, but they still get some right clicks off. The problem is the Sand King, really low, they just need, this is our first blood, yes, the Thunderclap actually hitting on two, but they have no way to return this. This is our first blood, 
completely unexpected and I just turn around and Ned, look how aggressive Ned is, he's like, okay, Scarif Mage, you want to duel with me? No problem, I'm supported by a Lycan Howl here, easy papeasy, I have the stronger right clicks either way. So yep, that was our first blood, just almost a minute, a bit more than a minute into the game and Team Mushi strikes first here. So let's see what's coming. They still have more potential. Oh, look at that casket. It's bouncing between the heroes. Wants to. Oh, he's slowed. Might be enough for the residual damage. One more right click. It is a follow up kill. That thunderclap here on the Brewmaster, it did not help again. And that first point into, or the second point rather, in the Voodoo Restoration that secures them even some nice lane presence because they can just stay around. They have Shadow Wave. They have the Voodoo Restoration. That's double healing power. And yep, I, actu I actually thought the. The trident here is a bit more potent with the double slow and the stun, but Team Mushi is proving me wrong. In the mid, we have to compare 12 6 on the Viper at the moment, while the Ember Spirit is 8 and 1. Well, Mushi leading here in CS, and well, maybe that Haste Rune and that early bottle on the Ember Spirit is gonna change something. We have a rotation here coming out Ohio. Level 3 already, he's gonna be level 4 after this creep, but there on the side, there is the Sand King. He's not level 2 yet, and. The so far, it's just not enough against the Darks here. You can't really do any anything against the Darks here right now. Like, he's just searching away. Even if you get the Burr Strike up, that won't really work. So for now, the Sand King just settles with the fact that he stacks his own jungle. And then it's gonna go level 2, level 3. He's gonna farm there. But yeah, Mushi, the harass on the Ember Spirit is real. It is real. He has to go back all the time. He's using even the Haste Drone. Does he go back with that Haste Drone? It seems like it. Or is he? No, he was just using it and bringing it in the courier just to have more or less time on the courier, travel time, I guess. But yeah, let's see. I mean, the Ember Spirit, he has to try to do the best in this lane, the best possible. Mushi is still leading, obviously. He's also like the leader in the charts at all now. Oh, nice little crit. I think that was also a Thunderclap on the Witch Dog, but surely not enough. There is not, no Shallow Crave yet. So if it's getting close here in the top lane, might not be a good idea. Ohio meets Zen King, and there is the Razor coming in, but... Oh, you gotta be careful. Yes, he's searching out. Or is he? Now he's staying around, he's just creep skipping. The Razor's coming in. I mean, you can drive him out easily, but... Oh, Viper in the mid. Boah. I was, I was expecting this kill to happen at some point, but yeah, it already happened there. But also top here, there's some nice clash forth and back, but the Panda is pretty much left alone here because the Scarif Mage went for the Illusion route, but yeah, also Mushi prevailing in his lane. He's gonna get the Buckler now. Yes, that's the Buckler for him. So he's halfway through the mech pretty much. He only needs 500 gold and the mech is done here only. And this is, this is pretty amazing. I mean, this is a mech. If he farms right, if everything's okay, then he gets that mech at like 6 minutes, 7 minutes, that's a very, very fast mech. And with that they could just go into fighting mode because of that early advantage. But look, Mushi there, Viper Strike up on him, the Ember, he can't really do anything. This is another kill, this is another kill, Mushi. I'm talking about a fast mech, with this kill we might see this mech actually happening on 5 minutes here because he only needs 100 gold more. Then here, double... He was looking for the poison touch, but no. The panda alone against this lane can't really do anything. That's that's the biggest problem. Can't really do anything. And since the supports just swapped lanes because they gave up that try line, I guess giving up that try line is a good idea because there's no way you could salvage that lane. Then on the other hand, Sand King is not too effective in farming, and as long as Ohio is around here, he can't go for his stacks. Like, it's, it's it's all cool that you have those stacks, but if Ohio discovers it, if Ohio has discovered this, he just puts an iron shell on one of the bigger creeps, and that, he's just farming it. Like, that farm is supposed to be for the Sand King, but it's not safe at all. But sure, they left their lane, and the first thing Team Mushi is doing here, let's go for it. There's a slow on the Lycan, but this is, yeah, it doesn't even impress him. So far, tower damage quite high. But let's see, do they want to go on him? No, Fox, he's not coming out with a Thunderclap. There wouldn't be also any follow-up, that's the biggest problem. He's far away from level 6, so they keep on going on that tower. There's a new creep wave incoming with that Voodoo Restoration, even helping the creeps to stay alive. Ember, coming in with a Haste Rune. Maybe they want to go top. They have to do something. Like the Team IP here, the Interactive Philippines, they have to do something, anything that shows some sort of initiative because 4-0 here and 
they already starting with towers. Well, it's it's not gonna be a tower, it's gonna be a deny, but either way. It is quite an advantage here. We are only six minutes in, but oh, he's thrown here on Mushi. He's going for the chains, but this is only level two chains, and Mushi is like, I'm not impressed. I'm not impressed at all. And he got the mech up, so he can use that mech anytime, and the Ember Spirit just not having enough damage, even with the haste thrown. Oh, top. There was a silence here, but now they go on Fox. He's still not level six. He can't help himself. Is there a stun? A stun has to come. It is. Will it bounce back on him? That's the question. Oh, the Shadow Wave doing nice damage with the Wolves being around here, but it's not enough. 27 HP. I can't even believe that. Well, lucky Wolf here getting out, but it was too close. It was too damn close. In the mid, the Ember Spirit finally being level 6, so he can work with the Remnant. He should not die to Mushi again. But well, let's see. We have the Sand King coming in. He is actually level 4, so he got his stack here. Ohio did not interrupt this farm, which is, I guess, good news. Now we have to see if they want to do something on Mushi. I think that's a mistake. I don't think they can kill him. Mushi with 600 HP, with that 10 armor and the mech at his disposal. That is bad news. That is really bad news, but... Uh, is he going for it? I smell. I really smell they want to do something. But there's also now two supports behind Mushi, just in case, so they smell already there is something in the air. Something is coming up, and KYXY is joining the fray here. Mushi and KYXY with the support in the background, they might want to go... They might want to go for that tower. In the meantime, we have Ember Spirit with the invisibility rune. Okay, that's interesting. There is no sentry whatsoever in the mid. Do we have any sentry available? No. Nope. Not even the Dazzle doesn't have anything. The Witch Dog, neither, so they wouldn't even see if the Ember Spirit is coming somewhere. But the Ember Spirit is rather going top where the Witch Dog is. And Net, right now, he only has the Cascade. Level 6 on the Brewmaster, so if they want to, they can go in. And I really have the distinct feeling they want to go in. They really want this kill. Some more CS on Fox. Net is coming in, oh, there are the chains, and I don't even think they need the ultimate, but uh, for now, Casket bouncing nicely, there's the Remnant getting closer, and yes, this is it, Net, you're going down, yes, it just took a long time, and this is enough time to get the tower in the mid, so this is the perfect thing, like the Ember Spirit and the Panda focusing on the support, while in the mid they lose a the tower, and the question is now, do they defend, or do they just go bottom and say like, hey guys, next tower is incoming, the Razor for now, not joining the fight at all. They're like, sure, let them do their stuff. I need my farm. He's also going for the mech. He's going to be the mech carrier. But like compared to Mushi, he's far, far away. Now, oh, he's trying to steal some damage off Ohio. This time is successful here. 56, one more tick, 70, 85. But now, oh, shapeshift being popped here with the iron shell on top. And oh my god, the wolves. are The wolves, are, are they blocking him in? No, but there's the slow. They might want to go for more. Of course he has this 84 damage, but now he's just TPing out. Oh, the vacuum, the vacuum interrupting it. They get the tower and they might actually get him on top of it. Look at the iron shell on top of the wolf. Easy going, but Mushi died top defending this tower with the ultimate of the panda. Like easy going. I don't know if did he even get no he didn't get his mech off. That is of course bad news. So Mushi didn't get his mech, and that is of course well a nice kill and it might as well be a tier one tower top, but in the meantime, they work already on a tier two while they even got the razor as a bonus kill. And that's bad news for the razor because there is nothing in the in the courier, nothing else, so the razor even lost the money for the headdress. And of course the 900 gold for the recipe. So they're far away from actually doing something here. Top, they do a creep skip here. Even chains being used for this because they want to get this tower. But oh, they wait for Mushi. But I don't think that's a good idea. I really don't think that's a good idea. Like, he should be happy that Mushi does not have the Viper Strike. Right now it's all about, yep, getting that damage in. But oh, they're TPing out. One more hit. One more hit. It's not enough. I can't even believe this. Mushi. Mushi going balls, but in the meantime, Sand King is getting the kill here on the Witch Dog, and now it's all about chasing them. Another Plasma Field would be ready. They were XYT peeing out, and De Double is saying, like, okay, I sacrifice my life for the sake of the team, and just stand still, so they are satisfied. So in the end, yes, they get quite some kills. Mushi still defending that tower top, and successfully so. It is on 3, 2, 4 HP. Okay. And we're 11 minutes in. I guess we have the first glimpse on the crafts, guys. Let's see what we have here. Gigabyte, 
Mushi's team here, they started quite nicely. They had almost a 3k lead when it came when it comes to experience, but now with that farm in the jungle of the Sand King, plus the four kills happening in the last some minutes, and the Razor completely ignoring the entire game pretty much and just free farming, well, they made quite a, a huge leap. This is a 4k swing in experience, and looking at gold, well, there is the tower advantage, obviously, for Team Mushi here. That is already three tier one tower down. One of them has been denied. That is equal. That equals like 5k gold. It's going a bit down after those two deaths we had, but still, with the Roshan, they should recuperate and still have like a 4k, 5k gold lead. But the interactive Philippines, they are going top. They want to defend, but yeah. Team Mushi has the same idea with Mushi here and that fat iron shell on top of him. Let's see if they want to go for it. We have all the ultimates ready again. Primal split. This might be a big fight, but the Lycan in the meantime is going for the split push. There's a remnant just saying hello to Mushi. There's a slow on Mushi, but right now, like all this just tickles Mushi. And they try to get the tower, but look at it. The poison attack here on the Razor. He has no mech. This mech is really needed for this fight. In the meantime, we got bottom here, the Lycan already finishing the tier 2 tower. This is this is costing them really, really time. The interactive Philippines, this is bad news. This is bad news for them. Viper Strike now on the Ember Spirit. He doesn't have a passive one, but they might get the tower. No! Oh, the Panda coming here in the background as well as the cliff being used. All this... Oh, the Skyrath Mage is not even dying to Dazzle. I can't even believe it. Mushi gets that kill, but the Dazzle is the next one to fall. Yes, it is. And now Mushi, they're trying to salvage something. The ultimate here, KYXY, is coming already in, destroying the, some Brulings. And it's now it's a 2 versus 3, pretty much, for the Ember. This is a bad idea. Look at the Death Ward. So much damage, but there's no poison damage left over. They can't really go for it. Instead, they get at least this kill. But if they get... Oh, this these bounces it's going to the neutrals and back on the razor he's so unlucky he's so unlucky with that vision on on them that was really really bad news and now we have for some reason the ember spirit still sticking around he has no tp scroll or rather he has a tp scroll with 10 no 18 18 seconds cooldown so he's running like he's faking he has somewhere a remnant does he remnant remnant he has one left does he go for it now oh my god mushi does he go the right turn? Ned is actually doing the right turn. He's finding him. The remnant somewhere here under the tower. And it is there. And KYXI was already waiting there. But the chains. The chains are just helping him. Maybe buying some time. Shapeshift is not ready. But oh my god. Ohio is coming here. And the wolf is getting the iron shell. But the wolf. The wolf is running out. I can't even believe it now. Ohio really wants to go for it. Super greedy. But he's getting stunned. Oh this is really unfortunate. I can't believe that this ember survived. This ember survived. Too bad those wolves were running out. Like, RNG is just not working for them at the moment. Jesus Christ. <laughs> what a game. This this ember actually, after all, did quite a good job stalling the time. Like, he was also, like, ready with his TP if he wanted to. But, yeah, Team Mushi is not impressed at all. They have in the net worth the three top farmers at the moment. And with all that and with the healing with the howl they can just go for the towers and that's exactly what they do they already work on a tower there is no cliff on the other side so they have to defend it all but there's chains here on the ember spirit viper strike coming out primal spirit not ready yet they still need it we also haven't seen a, a, a epicenter yet even though there is there is if you wanted to there is a plank dagger on the sand king but timushi i don't think they're too impressed the level one epicenter is nothing you're really scared of unfortunately and with the Mac, you can pretty much counter heal this, but oh, he was fishing with the chains, but not getting anything up. And yeah, they even get quite some damage on a tier 3 tower, but Team Mushi, they're like, hey guys, let's go mid. KYXY already TP'd in the mid tier 1 tower, which is still standing, and they want to go for the tier 2 tower. Team Interactive Philippines, they are well aware of this, apparently, and they want to go for it as well. Or rather, maybe even start a fight, a surprise fight because they are smoked let's see the wolves are scouting about now oh they're going mushy nice panda ultimate here after the thunder clap on all three but now oh the razor already being so low the mech being used he didn't even use his stick and right now net really super low but he's getting it the ember is actually following up but he's getting surged for now that's all fine they still try to kite the panda but oh panda he doesn't get his blink out so in the end he's probably gonna die with, even with a double iron shell he's trying to tp out but oh he gets it. I can't even believe it. He gets this. This is unbelievable. Like, this was... I don't know. This is the longest cask of all times. Did you guys see that? It flew from the mid. Either way, 
the, the witch dog also survived. So in the end, they lost the Sand King, they lost the Razor, and the Brewmaster only got the Dazzle. That's pretty much it. So that gives them exactly the time they need. Going for the tier 2 tower, they even get the cliff out. And if that cliff is down and they keep on pushing, they have nothing to protect the high ground anymore. Oh, Razor, nice one. He's getting that deny on the tower. Okay, that's a bit less go, but oh, nice stun here on Mushi. Damage stealing starts, but oh, the casket next to each other. It's bouncing between all the heroes there and the death ward on Foxy. It's doing so much damage. This is all without Maledict, just like that. Easy stuns, easy vacuum, and now they even go for the Razor Razor. This is a bad position. He still has the mech, he still has the stick. He's using actually both. Now Mushi stunned under the tower, but he's just too damn tanky. The Sandstorm being used, but Razor, Razor still in this awkward position, but the Ember's coming in, trying to do some damage with the Snyder Fist. It's only level 3, but let's see. Razor even using his ultimate just for the, the sake of the defense, but the Wolves, the Wolves even getting him low, and right now, well... Team Mushi is running out of creeps, that's the biggest problem. They have to go out for now. Oh, the chains holding them in place, but Mushi instantly turning around, giving him a right click in there. But what is the Sand King doing? TPing out, disjointing the entire thing. He still, like, he still waits for his epicenter, maybe to do something. But for now, Team Mushi is just going back and say, like, hey guys, we got enough, we got all the other towers. And with that, we just wait for something and then, yeah. Mana, HP, and we come back. But overall, they still have enough sustain. I mean, we have Arcane Boots. If you look at the items and where the sustain is coming from, like, we shouldn't be surprised. We have double Arcane Boots. Double Arcane Boots. We have the Urn of Shadow. We even have now Vladimir's Offering as well as the Medallion. Like, these all nice uh, team fight items as such. And, of course, the mech on Mushi. So, they have Voodoo Restoration, Shadow Wave, Urn, as well as mech for healing, and double Arcane Boots to make sure the team is not losing any mana or getting most of the mana restored even after the fights so this is really working out at the moment for team Mushi their sustain is quite high if they wanted to I'm pretty sure they could have even just stand still in front of the base and just say like hey guys we go and make this a slow siege but apparently they decide to go back farm some more at the moment they farm their own jungle while the ember spirit is running directly here through observer board so they see what's coming here at least they know the ember spirit is there now he's just farming the creeps sure but yeah smoke on the other side ohio oh what did you do ohio was a bit short there he didn't get the smoke but it doesn't really matter he's just joining the fight maybe even working as a bait but oh mushi his smoke was released and there they're getting slow this slow actually goes on two as well but now the wolves are scouting if they see koya here nope the wolves running out again but yeah i think they're ready they want to go high crown it is and in the meantime, there is no strong split push force coming out. The Razor is trying to do something, the Ember is trying to do something, but look at this. This is Wolves and a double creep wave, like, and now we go for it. There is level 1 Necro, so far not used, Viper Strike being spammed, of course, with the Arcanum Scepter. But let's see, like, they get quite some nice damage. This is just one go on a tier 3 tower, losing more than 50% HP. And if they want to, they can just rinse and repeat this, but oh, there is a smoke coming from the side. Is this a huge go? This is Blink in Thunderclap, Blink in Epicenter, trying to get them down. This is going to be interesting, and we see it pretty much soon. Ah, uh, Fox, wait for it. And there we go. Oh, the Thunderclap. He's canceling it. Now he's doing it and using his ultimate. Oh, Mushi getting the chains in an awkward position here, but Viper Strike on the Ember for now. They're all getting healed, and the Panda ultimate not really doing anything. They're even focusing the Pandas, but now. Oh, there was the attempt but it's not going through the Sand King, even going down. And now the Panda, I can't even believe it. The last Panda, oh well, they weren't fast enough to getting him down, but now it should be fine. This time they're hitting on all three, but still, just Mushi is like, hey guys, let's just stand still and just nuke whatever comes out there. Here, the Ember, you gotta be careful. Use the Remnant to get the hell out of here. There's no cliff protecting the base. This is Rex. This has to be Rex, un unless there is something crazy coming out. What I don't understand is where was the epicenter? He could have channeled it and jumped in. That would have been some damage, but this way he just came in, stunned, was in the wall, died pretty much right away, and that's pretty much it. So Mushi, they Team Mushi, they even feel they can go for more new wolves and just go in here for the range tracks as well. Never leave a business unfinished, apparently. But they got what they wanted, but oh, they don't want to let them escape, but oh god, with the vacuum, the Skyrim Mage is already going down and the Sand King is following him. He was pretty much three seconds alive, he just came back from the fountain and, well, Timushi is saying like, thank you, we got the nice bonus gold here, 
you two just jumping in. That is, again, Blink Dagger, but the epicenter only used once this game. After these wrecks are down, we have to look at the crafts and, yes, experience bias. I mean, the Filipinos, they, they fought back here. That was when they got the five kills in a row. But still, right after, then Team Mushi just started to farm again in their direction. 7.5 in experience. And when it comes to gold, those those four kills, they just slowed the graph a bit down. But overall, progression of the graph is just in one direction. And in one direction only, it is to Mushi's team. 15k now, after the wrecks are down. But the Philippines, they don't want to give up. And there is a smoke. It's on Mushi. He's slowed. Oh, there it is. It's a lot of damage, of course. But it's just a level one, unfortunately. Mushi still getting focused down. There is a shallow grave on the epicenter. Mushi still trying to do something with his life. But no. It's not successful, and now, oh, even Double has some problem. There's the Boulder Toss stun holding him in place, and that's a 2 for 0 trade. Mushi even buying back. Okay, that was a very interesting buyback, but oh, Ohio, you gotta be careful here. There's 112 damage stolen on the Razor, but for now, oh my god, the Death Ward and the Vacuum back. The Razor is paying for this insolence here under the tower going down as well. In the meantime, we also had KYXY getting that kill on the Skyrath Mage, cleaning up, but he's using Shapeshift and wants to go even for more. There is the Ember. Oh, does he camp maybe the other Ember spots? But no, for now, Fox is just TPing out. That's the best thing he can do. The Ember is using the Remnant just to get away. These fights all over the place, but in the end, like the two nice kills they had, with a strange movement directly solo under a tower, then two supports killing your Razor there. That was just a bad idea, and with all this, timing is perfect. Siege engine, Mushi is going directly under the tower to keep that siege engine alive. A new creep wave is coming in, and new wolves as well. This is Necro 2, I think? No, this is already Necro 3. So with that Necro 3, that's a lot of damage on the objectives here. And now, look at it, Necros, everything is already going here for the melee barracks, and there's nothing they can do at the moment. They're going down, regardless of what they do. Viper Strike Spam, just doing the job. For now, KYXY, uh, they still want to commit. The shapeshift is ready again if they wanted to, but now, I don't know if they want to fight. 20 seconds here still on, on the primal split. There's nothing they can do at the moment. They just watch how it's all going down. And the fun part is, top here, without them doing anything, they're pushing in the tower. That's the funny part. The siege engine and the creep wave. Like, if, if they don't defend this soon, they're going to lose the tower as well. Or they just rotate in, which we see right now. But apparently... Yeah, they have the same thought as I do. And they're just going in. This is the last Rex. And I just don't see the initiative coming out. More spam, more Viper Strike spam coming out. The Wolves, even with the Iron Shell, doing the job. But KYXY just working on the towers. That's the last tier 3 tower to fall. And Mushi, as he stands, like he doesn't even have to care about creeps anymore with the Iron Shell. But oh, there, finally we see Sephiroth Primal Split. And it hit actually on two, but look at it, they just stand still and focus on the Brulings. But oh, for now, Mushi getting a ton of damage, but a nice wall here that is on almost everybody in the death ward. Oh, it's actually getting cancelled, or rather he cancels it, so he's trying to go out. The Razor is trying to go in, but oh my god, he's dying. So I think Ned has to pay for this, they focus on him in the meantime. Oh, but is there a casket flying? No. Nope. It was just at one pounce on the panda. Now double is being slowed here. But in the meantime, Mushi and <laughs> KYX by there in the base, they're like, okay guys, you can focus our support and we focus your racks in the meantime. But there is the courier. Is the courier even getting killed? Yes, that was the courier. Fox just TPing out because he knows. But oh, the vacuum interrupting him. Now the question is on who do they focus? Yes, it is Lycan getting that kill. And that poor Ember, he can't do anything in the background. Sentin coming in, but now he's slowed here and he's going down. Just with the necro units, they even have the vision. Last Rex to do. Fox coming in, fought back, but I don't think he can do anything. Not without Primal Split. Mushi is not impressed at all. He's getting surged forward. Kolya is the one to focus for. Oh, but there has been the mag. And now damage stolen on Mushi is quite high. He's getting blocked by his teammate at the moment for a bit. So the racer going in. They still protect their last Rex. I can't even believe this. I can't believe they protected, but KYXY coming in with the shapeshift, he doesn't care. And now the Razor, he's getting... Yep. He's getting nuked. The same for the Panda, and there's no buybacks left, no nothing. Last Rex, Mega Creeps, and the GG call at the same time. 26 minutes. But as far as I know, if I'm not 100% mistaken, these games are always best of threes. So there is still a chance for the Philippines, for the interactive Philippines to come back here. Either way, guys, 
we are 1200 people on the channel and this was without any tickers without any crazy exposure but twitter and facebook thanks for tuning in and we will be back for game number two in just a second